According to the Australian, a Bureau of Statistics survey reveals that the share of mortgage holders struggling to pay their loan on their home or investment property had jumped from 5% in June to 11% just four months later. So that means that over 10%, more than one in 10 mortgage holders, is struggling to make their repayments. While there have been signs of an economic recovery, the transition away from government stimulus and import support, income support means that some are struggling to fill the gap. AMP Chief Economist Shane Oliver says problem loans might be resurfacing as support measures are wound back and banks get tougher on borrowers who receive repayment deferrals through the crisis. This was always bound to be the issue, wasn't it? Uh, that um, you know we were always going to have to eventually pay back whatever it was that we deferred. And um, it, it just goes to show that the, you know, the level of some mortgages that uh, people are taking out around Australia... Um, it's a lot different to what it was years ago. We seem to be, you know, spend outside of our um, um, our means more often than not. Um, but it uh, does uh, doesn't seem to be affecting the property values here in Australia with political turmoil in the US, ongoing tensions with China, the effects of the global pandemic. One would ask, how is it possible that Australian property prices are powering ahead? The first COVID vaccines are on the horizon. Uh, JobKeeper is still going for another few months and community transmission of COVID-19 has virtually stopped outside of this uh, new cluster in South Australia uh, where it's one family. Um, so if you think property prices are starting to surge now, wait until uh, foreign investors realise that Australia is effectively COVID safe and our economy is recovering fast. Talk to us more about this. Steve Chandler is a property development expert and award-winning property development trainer. Steve, uh, it almost begs belief that um, our property prices do- seem to be ignoring the newspapers. I, I, I don't think anyone in Australia is reading them. It's it's, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Siri, as you said, the biggest belief. How is it possible? You know, China, China and Australia are having this you know wonderful spat. Uh, you know, we've got the US in absolute turmoil at the moment. You know, we've got a you know, a, a potential. Um, you know, new um, president there that uh, you know is probably going to be China friendly. Um, you've got the incumbent president who's just not letting go, and whether he has or hasn't got the legal right to do so is not something for us to really worry about. The yeah. fact is, he's not letting go. It's just you know we don't know what's going to happen in the US. We don't know what's going to happen between the US and China, and therefore we don't know what's going to happen between China and Australia. We rely, our economy is sort of 35% of our trade is with China. Um, so there's that massive turmoil. And yet here we are, we're getting auction clearance rates in you know, most of the capital cities of 80% um, every weekend for the last few weekends. Wow, that's just mind-blowing. So who is buying uh, all this property? Is it is it uh, a homeowners? Is it is it people that are going to live in the properties? Is it mostly investors? Uh, is there a, a pattern? Uh, first homeowners are a, a, a big component of it. Um, it just seems to be the the, oh, the the lower price range, particularly. Um, there's a higher volume in the in the lower price range. It seems that people, you know, with with this lowering of the interest rates uh, down to you know a, another historical low. I mean, how, how much lower can they go? Um, people are saying, hey. You know, we've still got JobKeeper. Um, the Australian economy is, you know, recovering. The, the federal budget has, you know, given confidence back to a lot of people. Unemployment numbers, even though JobKeeper is going to wind back and more people will become unemployed, but unemployment is, is, is holding up, you know, surprisingly well. So there's a massive amount of confidence sitting in, in the, you know, in the community, in the business community for keeping you know, people employed and for individuals who've got those jobs to make an investment in property while prices are, you know, well, they're starting to come back now because there's massive demand. Still got limited stock, um, but there seems to be this pent-up demand over the last six months where people haven't been able to buy property. Um, pent-up demand and limited supply, and prices go up and things sell at auction. So I guess the big, the question uh, moving forward is, and, and I before I spoke to you, I mentioned that... Uh, the Bureau of Statistics has suggested that the number of mortgage holders struggling to pay their loans has doubled since June from 5% to 11%. Uh, 
to 11%. Um, as you say, interest rates are as low as they're ever going to get. And we, the only way we're really going to know when we're out of this recession is that interest rates start going up again. Uh, what does that mean for all these people that are getting into the market now? And what will it mean for property prices once the pinch sets in, which is definitely coming? Yeah, it's a double-edged sword for people getting into the market now, obviously with interest rates so low. Um, you know, if you get in now and, and you stretch yourself to do that, um, you, you're going to get yourself into trouble when interest rates go up. However, the banks are being relatively uh, cautious at the moment with their lending, so for someone to actually get themselves into trouble um, may not be possible with the lending covenants that the, that the banks are looking at at the moment. So, you know, not lending people 80 or 90 percent of the value of the property. That's that's sort of where the, the buffer will be, is just stopping people from having that massive debt yeah. so that when interest rates do go up, they, they, they've got some buffer to deal with it. So what's your advice, to, and, and I know this isn't particularly your, your realm of expertise, but I'm sure it's something you've considered. Given that interest rates are so low, do you go in now and get a fixed rate for, for five years or do you uh, ride the wave, as it were, so that you're kind of, I guess, a little bit more prepared as interest rates tend to rise over, over time? Well, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm keen on locking in. My, my view is you're better to pay a little bit more because the difference between, um, you know, what the interest rates are now and what they could be in the future when you look like if you lock them in, um, when you've got that certainty about your mortgage payment is not going to move for the next, you know, five years, you can make some, you know, really good decisions, uh, around, you know, your debt levels and your, your income and, you know, having savings is such an important thing because, you know, one day, you know, whether it's you become unemployed, <clears throat> you know, from, you know, your company downsizing or something of that nature or going broke, or if, you know, something happens in the economy, whatever it is, you need that buffer. Everyone needs to have savings. So I'd be looking in for the next five years so that I've got certainty around what my surplus income is. Yeah, good advice. Steve, great to speak to you this morning. Thank you very much, Steve. That's uh, Steve Chandler. He's a property development expert and award-winning property development trainer. Some very, very good advice there. And, uh, yeah, I guess it's a bit of a crystal ball as to what's going to happen down the track, isn't it?